I am entrepreneur and for some people, emmerdeur. Um, so my apologies for my behavior, um, but sometimes I feel things have to be said in, and if I have 37 seconds, there's only one way to say it. Um, but we have the pleasure to really here go into a conversation with a man that I consider last year's best kept secret of uh, the Zermatt Summit. I mean, Marco, he was there all the time and he seemed to do everything not to be noticed. Um, and uh, it's only after the dinner, late at night, that uh, he came to me and started showing me some things on his iPad. Where is your iPad? Just up there. Okay. Can you keep... You're going to stand in there and do yeah. it? Or, yeah. Yes. Okay. So and he starts showing me on his iPad things, and I say, but this can't be true. Is this man... Is this Photoshop? I mean, it's something like you see there. And... He starts talking, and I'm waiting for my son, who actually had my wallet. Um, you never should give your wallet to your son, but then for some reason he ended up with my wallet. And so I really needed to take a break after the horrendous trip and the travel and all of that. And, and I was sitting there, and, and I said, give me a glass of champagne. And I had a glass of champagne. And then Marco came, and poor Marco, he ended up paying for the bottle of champagne because my son hadn't come back. Um, but that didn't turn him off. Um, it certainly motivated me to learn about an incredible individual and about a project that I think really merits time to discover. Because what we're doing here today is a discovery of an odyssey. And the odyssey, of course, must start with the odyssey of the individual. And that is Marco himself. So, Marco, my first question to you is really, I mean, where do you come from? I mean, what did you do in your life uh, to do today what you're doing today? Uh, you I were an entrepreneur. Before to be an entrepreneur, uh, I was a student. <laughs> and, uh, uh, yes, uh, maybe one thing who changed my life, I think, uh, I, uh, my father died when I was 12. And uh, my mother, she didn't have got so much money. So uh, I have to work during all the vacations to earn my, uh, my money. And uh, with that, I think uh, <coughs> I start to, uh, to, uh, to set up uh, things and, uh, and uh, try to, to, go, uh, to go forward with uh, visions, ideas, uh, without uh, having any uh, barrier. And uh, uh, I, I, I was doing a, a, a mechanician electronician as a, as, a, as a study, and after that I, uh, I was following the engineer school in Yverdon in telecommunication. And at the age of uh, 28, uh, I started my uh, first uh, company in the IT era. IT or internet? IT, it was, uh, it was the beginning of the internet. It was uh, quite very... F so we're talking 91, 92, 93? Yes, it, it was... An, uh, exactly, it was... Uh, uh, I, 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 uh, I started my co first company in 94. Uh, and uh, it's, uh, the idea was the interconnection of uh, the, the, the computers because uh, at, uh, uh, at this... Uh, a stage, uh, uh, it was a, a big challenge to interconnect what we call uh, uh, PC computers with mainframes, and we have got uh, many uh, protocols to interconnect the, the machines. And uh, I was very excited with, the, with this new uh, world of the interconnection uh, that uh, PC can speak with a uh, mainframe. And, uh, and, uh, and we're using telephone lines then. Uh, yes, we were using mainly uh, telephone lines, exactly, and after uh, we, we get uh, fibers uh, some years after, but we started, uh, yes, with, uh, with uh, telephone lines, with modem, we call that modem. Uh, and today, when I see what, uh, what is the internet today, uh, uh, I don't know if uh, it was a good idea uh, to interconnect the <laughs> computer <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> that uh, well, I, I try to do. So because uh, internet today, uh, we spoke about that uh, yesterday, there is so great things behind, but also uh, we, uh, we, we are losing the freedom, I think. But that company you sold, 
Yes. So, uh, Rather quickly, though. No, 20 years after, uh, in 2015, I sold the company uh, with about uh, 500 employees, uh, 120 million of turnover. It was a Swiss company with the quarter in Lausanne and uh, other uh, sub uh, offices in Geneva, Bern, and Zurich. So we were covering the, 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 the full Swiss territory, and I sold this company to uh, Swisscom. And you regret? Uh, no, I don't regret because uh, uh, because uh, what you will see, uh, what we will speak about uh, today, uh, I can do it because uh, I get money from uh, Swisscom by selling the company, and uh, with this uh, a big part of this uh, this money, I I, 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 uh, I am putting it uh, uh, for the, the the project, the Odyssey, and the, the boats and everything that you will see. But, but it means you bought your freedom from your own company and you were able to do, follow your passion. But, uh, yes and no. My passion was all, uh, when I was uh, working in the IT era, all what I am doing, I am doing with passion. All, uh, everything. So, uh, That's a good principle. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, but before I just changed uh, my life in, in another way, but uh, all what I am doing, I am doing with passion. But before you get to this boat, you were playing with other boats. Yes, uh, I was uh, with an uh, with, uh, uh, associate. Uh, in 2009, uh, we decided to build uh, what we call the trimaran, sailing boats. Uh, exactly the same boats for uh, everybody because uh, uh, I love uh, very much to, uh, to sell and, uh, and uh, when you look the competition, uh, America's Cup or those kind of competitions is always the, the boat was the, or the, the team was the most, uh, the most money who has the most chance uh, to win because uh, it's always linked with the technology and uh, I wanted to put uh, in the center the human the people, so the, uh, the idea uh, was uh, to build exactly the same, uh, very good boat, but is exactly the same boat for... How many for did you make? Uh, the, the, the seven. The goal was 12, but I didn't, uh, I didn't reach uh, my goal, but uh, seven boats, and uh, we, uh, we were uh, making a, a championship with uh, these boats, and the... the, the were people betting on the boats? Were they betting? Uh, yes, there are. Well, there were betting. Uh, that there was not. Uh, there was not uh, an official betting, but uh, uh, between tr crew and p internal people, yes, well, uh, they did it. You want to see uh, just uh, some of? Uh, we we yeah, want to see things, of course. Uh, I mean, but but are these the boats that were racing across the Atlantic? Yes, during the first Odyssey in 2015. So. Uh, Yeah, What's uh, the cost of one boat? Uh, the boat was about uh, three uh, millions of uh, euro per boat, and this is not uh, it's not so much because uh, regarding uh, it's not very much. It's, it's not, very, not much. very much because uh, regarding competition boats uh, in the America's Cup or uh, those kind of boats is uh, are. Uh, Millions and millions and millions. And uh, why uh, I get those boats just for uh, three millions? Because I was uh, building uh, many. So I decreased the cost of, uh, of those boats. So I can show you maybe just a small uh, here, yes. OK. These are the boats. Uh, well, I don't know why we don't have sound. Which we should have the sound. I tried this morning, it was working, but uh, you can see here, uh, these are the boats, very uh, incredible uh, trimaran, competing, uh, so we, I have built the seven of these boats, and uh, here you can see Race for Water, that it was the, the, the first boat that I was building, and every are exactly the same, so the difference is only made by the crew, the, the capacity of the crew, because they have exactly the same boat, the same support. And how long does it take to cross the Atlantic? Uh, it takes uh, less than five days. So the, the average speed of those boats uh, are about uh, 25 uh, uh, knots, and uh, the, the maximum speed that we reached was uh, 43 knots. Uh, could you translate that for those who are not sailing in kilometers per hour? Uh, 
it's about 30 to 35 uh, kilometers per hour for the, the average speed, and uh, the most uh, the, 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 the most fast uh, speed was about uh, 60 to 65 uh, kilometers per hour. And I'm sure these boats didn't have very nice cabins to live in. And then <laughs> the they. <laughs> Uh, you have uh, no shower, you have no toilets, you have uh, no fridge, you have nothing uh, in these boats because uh, you have just two beds. Huh? And it's, uh, uh, it's only made by carbon. And uh, in 2015, I, I was doing my first uh, odyssey for the foundation for Race for Water uh, with this boat uh, around the world, uh, going through what we call the gyrus or the, the, the vortex to understand really what's happened with the plastics in the oceans. So we were five on the boat, and uh, without a shower, without a toilet, and without nothing. Uh, but uh, it was a very great experience, because uh, you don't need to have so much things to, to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> Getting back to basics is very important. But uh, what I think was important uh, is when you're on the boats going across the Atlantic, you start seeing these massive amounts of plastics. Yes. Uh, Amongst other plastics we could associate to a company with a name? <laughs> yeah. We were speaking just uh, be, uh, before about uh, P PNG, and uh, I was just thinking it was, uh, it was quite funny. I don't know if the, the, it's the good uh, world, but uh, in 2015 I was on the oceans, and uh, PNG gets uh, from the United Nations. The, P, uh, the, 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 the president of PNG gets the, the, the awards of the best uh, sustainable uh, companies in the world. And uh, uh, I was uh, on the oceans, on, the, on, the, on the, the islands that are in the middle of the, the gyrus and the, on the beaches. I saw so many bottles of, sh uh, of shampoo and so coming from PNG. And uh, uh, for me, it was, it was shocking that in the one hand, they get the... the, the, the the award of the best uh, sustainable company, and uh, uh, the reality on the ocean is uh, I saw a lot of uh, plastic waste from this brand. But, but then you had this opportunity to acquire this amazing boat. Yes, uh, now we will speak about uh, uh, a totally different uh, boat, because in 2015 I, I was in touch with the owner of uh, uh, the biggest uh, solar catamaran in the world. And uh, it, uh, it's a German guy who has uh, built up this boat in 2010. And uh, the boat was called Planet Solar. It's the first boat who was doing a world tour only with solar energy between 2011 to 2012. And uh, uh, he wanted to give a second life to, uh, to his boat. He has, got, uh, he has got many proposals to, 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 uh, to buy the boats for uh, five, six uh, millions of euro. And uh, uh, when I was uh, speaking with him, I, I, I told him that uh, uh, I am very interested by the boat, but I will not pay for it. Uh, but I told him that uh, I can do a very great uh, uh, use of this uh, boat. Uh, I have the vision to do a five-year odyssey with this boat. And uh, he was uh, so exciting about the foundation, about uh, what we, we are doing and what we will do with the boat. The, so he decides to, uh, to, donate the, to donate the boat to, to the Rest for Water Foundation. But then you started redesigning the boat. Yes, because uh, the, 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 when the boat is just uh, working with uh, solar energy, uh, there is an issue when uh, you don't have sun. So, uh, <laughs> so, uh, the, the, so the you put in batteries. Uh, the batteries was already on, uh, on, uh, in the boat because when you have solar panels, you have to store uh, the, the energy somewhere. So uh, you have uh, on this boat you have uh, eight tons of lithium batteries uh, to store the, 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 the energy coming from the sun. And with that, you have about two days of uh, autonomy. It means after two days, if you don't have any more sun, the electric motors, the propeller, will stop. And uh, for uh, the, the, the first uh, uh, journey with this boat, with uh, Raphael Donjon, with Planet Solar, it was not an issue uh, because uh, it, they, were, they were not uh, running again the time. The goal was just to do the, the world tour with only sun. But 
With my Odyssey, I we, we, we are stopping in many uh, cities, coastal cities, on islands, and I have to, to uh, I have a schedule. And uh, uh, it's complicated if the boat is arriving 10 days uh, after uh, the, 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 uh, the agenda. So uh, I was thinking I need to have other kind of energy, but I wanted to have su only sustainable energy. And this boat, when the, this boat is uh, at the marina, when uh, this boat is not uh, uh, sailing or driving, I don't know, uh, you, you uh, Americans say driving, I don't like this word, I prefer sailing. Uh, um, when the, this boat is at the marina, uh, uh, in about 12 hours, the batteries are full if you have sun. And after that, you lose all the energy coming from the solar panels. So uh, the, uh, we thought, okay, what we have to do is uh, we are pumping the salt water from the ocean, and uh, we are using what uh, we are desaling that uh, that water, and uh, we are using electrolyzer to separate the molecule of hydrogen from the molecule of o oxygen. We have compressor on the boat, 25 tanks, and we are compressing the hydrogen at 350 bars. Uh, on the on the boat, and we have two fuel cells. So when you you are uh, sailing with the boat and you don't have sun, you are just using the the storage of the hydrogen, making uh, the electricity with. C can you show a picture of your boat with the hydrogen tanks? Uh, do you have that? Uh, yes, maybe I have a, 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 a movie uh, explaining uh, the the. Yes, Odyssey. of course. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Start with that. We want to see things. Uh, so, I don't know if you can touch the boat today. <laughs> so, so what I think is very important is that uh, in, in this conversation we that... We need this, uh, the, uh, I don't know why, the sound is not working. So, uh, it was working this morning, so something has changed. Sound, es gibt kein, jetzt funktioniert's, ja, ja gut. So, what I think is important in this conversation with uh, Marco is no that... No sound. Don't worry, we see the pictures. No, no, it's very important to get the, the sound. Uh. But he has voice as well. Uh, maybe uh, I have an ID. I am not connected with the good one, or yes? So while he's working it out, you know, you can just imagine you're sitting there in Zermatt, and he's telling me that, well, you know, when we don't have sun, we just have hydrogen, and the hydrogen comes from the seawater. I don't know how it strikes you, but, you know, to come with the idea of having a solar panel, and if the solar doesn't work, then you just get the water from the sea, and you generate your hydrogen. I mean, really a bigger picture started uh, uh, coming up in my I'm mind. working well this morning, I don't know. And the bigger picture is that uh, a... A, a boat is like an island, it's like a small community. And so if you can have a small community where you have solar and seawater and you get power and drinking water, you have really a very down-to-earth solution for just about any community, right? Exactly. exactly. And uh, the, the, this boat, uh, today this boat is using... Uh, not a third a, force. Exactly, the, the wind. As you will see in the, in, the, in, the, in the movie, we are using a kite. And uh, this kite is towing the, the boat when uh, we are uh, uh, sailing downwind. It's, it's, it means in the same direction that the wind. So we are using three kinds of, uh, of sustainable energy, the wind, the sun, and the water. And uh, it's always combinations of energy, of sustainable energy, that uh, it's, uh, it's important to, uh, to have. If you have only solar, you have risks. If you have no sun, if you have uh, only one kind of sustainable energy, it's, not, it's too risky. So you have to combine together all those, uh, kind of those sources of energy. And regarding the, 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 the kites, I will uh, show you also when it will work. Uh, I will show you. Uh, oh, the, the kite is working, and the company who is, uh, is doing this uh, is making those uh, kites. They are making also what we call power kites. 
It means they are making electricity with, the, with those kites. Uh, and uh, this is also a very great combination with the solar panels because during the night you have no sun, so the solar pa panels are not <coughs> making electricity. You can run the, 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 um, the kites, the power kites during the night, making the energy with that, and during the day if you have, um, uh, like in Easter Island, there is an airport. So during the day it, it, co it could be very tricky to, uh, to let the kite uh, flying because you have uh, 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 the, the airport just uh, very close. So we can imagine to use the kite during the night because they have, uh, they, they are, there are no uh, airplane uh, landing uh, uh, during the night. And during the day we use uh, solar panels and we can use combinations. And it's always like, like that we have to, uh, to think about. Now this becomes very interesting it's, it's okay? because, because uh, the wind becomes base load. Now we all know the challenge with the mix of energies. Wind energy becomes a base load because you go with the kite up to how high? Plastic, uh, the miracle the kite, material uh, of the 20th century, has invaded every corner of our planet and colonized our daily lives. More plastic will be produced in the coming decade than has been produced since its inception. But you know, what really fascinated me with the approach of uh, Marco was that he, in the end, you're stimulating entrepreneurship. And you're motivating policymakers to change policy. So tell us about doing entrepreneurship on a little island like Easter Island in Rapa Nui. Mm -hmm. I mean, you spent how many, six weeks there? Yes, I just uh, spent uh, six uh, weeks uh, there uh, a few uh, days ago. Uh, but uh, my first contact with the Rapa Nui was in uh, 2015 when uh, we, we have done uh, our first odyssey with the, the trimaron. 
And uh, there are just uh, eight amazing people there. Rapa Nui are people coming uh, from the Polynesia uh, part. Uh, they are people so well connected with the nature uh, uh, that it's, uh, it's just amazing to, uh, to, to see and to discuss with them and to see how they act. Uh, an example, uh, they are fishing a lot, huh? they are eating uh, mainly uh, fish because uh, they are, uh, it's the most isolated islands in the world. Uh, we are at about 3,500 kilometers from uh, Chile and about uh, 4,000 kilometers from uh, Polynesia. And, uh, and uh, they are still fishing uh, uh, like uh, uh, old, times. old times, exactly. Uh, and they are just fishing what they need and not, uh, and not more. And, uh, and I was, uh, uh, I get in love with these uh, uh, people and also with the, the, the island because the island has a, a just an amazing story also with the, the Mohai. Uh, it's a so beautiful island. And uh, when I So they talked about their problems with you? Yes, exactly. And they have uh, many uh, challenges and uh, many issues. And one is, uh, is uh, just terrible. Uh, it's uh, plastics ending on them uh, beaches. The, the They're part of one of the big gyres, right? Yes. They're right yes. in the middle in They're one of those plastic islands. Y yes. They're an island in an island. Uh, I don't like the word plastic islands. I prefer soup of plastics because uh, media are speaking a lot of plastic uh, islands, seven, uh, the, the seven continents and things like that. There is no uh, plastic island uh, the, where you can work on or thing like that. It's more terrible. We are, uh, it's uh, uh, the billion of uh, pieces of, uh, of plastics. And, uh, and uh, those plastics are uh, spread in the oceans uh, quite everywhere. And with the current, we can have uh, what we call with the word vortex, we have an accumulation. And the uh, Rapa Nui Island, as you can see on this, uh, in, the, in this uh, video, yeah, but this was uh, just uh, uh, a few days ago. We are with the, the, the solar boat there. And uh, this island is full, full, full of uh, uh, microparticles of plastics coming from the land. Uh, and uh, it's just amazing to imagine that this island is in the middle of nowhere and it's just full of microparticle plastics coming from land. Look, look, this is the beach there. You can see plastics, uh, microparticles of plastic everywhere. Here you have the moai behind, and here you have what? You have just uh, pieces of plastics. And they are eating mainly fish. So, uh, and we have a, a, a fisherman uh, telling us, no, when we are fishing, always we, find, we are finding uh, microparticle plastic in the stomach of the fishes. So they are eating plastic there. And we are also eating plastic. Why? Because today we have about 25% of the fishes in the world who have already microparticle plastic in the stomach. It's just a terrible, each minute you have like a truck of plastics uh, ending in the, in, in the water, in the ocean, each minute. Uh, here you can, uh, you can see uh, uh, behind again the Moai and, uh, and uh, Mark uh, who is uh, an ambassador of the, of the foundation explaining that it's just uh, incredible to, 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 to find so many uh, particles of plastics on the, on the beaches. And uh, you, but, but you have to be there to, 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 to feel it's just, uh, uh, it's just terrible. And this is what uh, the humanity is doing. But Marco, you sit down with the local population and you propose them solutions. Exactly. Uh, they have about uh, 50 tons 50 tons of plastics ending every year on them uh, beaches. There are about 7,000 people living there on Rapa Nui Island. And you have more than 100,000 tourists uh, coming in the island every year. So they are making at all about 2.5, uh, 2,500 million, uh, 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 no, 2,500 uh, tons of waste per year, 2,500 tons of waste per year. 
and they have no uh, uh, nothing to on the island to uh, to uh, manage this waste, to trade this waste, to uh, to uh, they are just putting the the waste on the on the landfill. Here, just uh, we 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 have done uh, a beach cleanup, and in one hour we get uh, 528 uh, uh, kilos of plastics just in one hour. But but what the is now? Now let's come to the solutions. Uh, here you Marco. can see you can see the, the 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 landfill there. So they have nothing to treat, like quite every island that I was uh, visiting. Islands today have no solutions to treat the waste. They're just putting the waste on the landfill, and many are burning the waste. Uh, we have uh, developed with a uh, with a partner uh, called Eteia. Uh, a hyperolysis uh, machine that can convert uh, plastic waste and also home wastes uh, in energy uh, with uh, what we call high temperature pyrolysis. So how much of the energy of the island could be produced by just using that waste that we're seeing right here on those screens? We can provide about 16% of the electricity of the island just by this. You can see it's all the plastic that they are stocking. They don't know what to do with. They are just, this is the machine that we will install there on Rapanui Island. Uh, will uh, uh, convert the, the plastic waste in, in, in energy. And we can uh, make with this machine, it's a machine who can treat about 5 tons per day, and we can make with that about 16% of the annual electricity. Uh, today, the elect this is the mayor of, uh, of Rapanui, and we have signed the, uh, an agreement to install uh, the machine uh, uh, there. So, uh, so, but tell me a little bit about the business model behind it. Are you... Who, who's paying for the machine? Who's installing it? Uh, is, is this uh, something that has to go through a lot of bureaucracy with the central government in Chile? I mean, how do you deal? Because in the end of the day, you're disrupting a traditional supply of electricity where there is import of fuel, yeah. there's diesel generators, and I'm sure some people are making good money on those diesel imports. Exact, exact. Uh, today, uh, they are using uh, about 4 million of tons of diesel every year to make the electricity uh, on the island. Uh, they need about 14 uh, gigawatt -hour of electricity per year. So it's a huge amount of money. Uh, the cost to make the electricity on, on the island is 70 cents by kilowatt hour. Do we have a business model, do you think? I mean, 70 cents kilowatt hour. I mean, uh, how is it ever possible that someone kept on earning money on 70 cents kilowatt hour? How much is subsidy? Uh, more than four uh, millions of dollars coming from the, the Chile every year just for the electricity. So a subsidy of four million, you have plastics locally, and then you're telling me that uh, basically the fuel is today all imported by boat. Exact. And there is no real port. No, there There's is no harbor. No, no, there is no port. So how often do you have a little spill? Uh, but they have a small, uh, small uh, boats that uh, are carrying the the the. the the, 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 the I mean, this is 2018, huh? we're not talking, and this is the most visible island in the world. This is Easter Island, Rapa Nui. I mean, isn't it quite shocking that we are able as a community to tolerate something that is really not very human? So you, you have a buddy there, you have a, a lady friend there, an old lady, a wonderful lady, who has a lot of influence because... The politics is sometimes difficult. Is it true that the mayor is the importer of the fuel? Uh, no, the, son, uh, the, the brother of the mayor. The brother of the mayor imports the fuel. Um, let's get down to reality, uh, transparency, etc. So how do you overcome this? Uh, you are the rich Swiss who lands with a beautiful boat on this island, and you're basically telling them that let's import less fuel. and let's. How do you convince the people on the ground? Uh... In, uh, in, in many ways. First of all, uh, it was uh, we, we, we did with you, uh, Gunther, in Valparaiso, a huge work with the, the Chile government. So maybe you can explain the, 
that we have got the president of, uh, of Chile, uh, Mr. Pinera, coming on the, on the board, and some of the, uh, the minister. Maybe you can just uh, explain that, because uh, uh, Gunther has a very uh, important and huge uh, network, and uh, for, for, uh, for us, it's really key to, to, uh, to, uh, to have the, uh, the possibility to, uh, to use this, uh, this network. So we, we have done with, uh, wing, with Gunther uh, first uh, uh, a huge job when the, the boat was in uh, Valparaiso. Because Easter Island, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's very particular because uh, local people, Rapanui, they feel, uh, and they are a Poly Polynesian people. They're but, colonized. But exactly, 130 years ago, and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, but Rapanui Island belonged to uh, the region of Valparaiso, so to Chile. So there is always a fight between local people, between uh, the Chile government. So to be successful on uh, those kind of projects, we have to align everybody, and it's uh, it's uh, it's a huge work because first we have to convince the the Chile government. And when the Chile government is in line, we have to do the same job on the island with the local population. And uh, with Gunther, we did the, the first part uh, in Valparaiso. And myself, I was doing the second part during those six weeks that I spent on the island. And uh, uh, I have also signed. This is uh, something uh, also really uh, incredible. Uh, a, an agreement with a company called Sasipa. Sasipa is the company making the electricity for the island. Sasipa belongs 100% to the Chile government. And Sasipa was any more uh, 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 changing and uh, talking, uh, talking, talking, talking. Exa exactly ex uh, with the, 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 the local population, with the, ra with the, the Rapanui, with the Onui, the family. Uh, because uh, you have uh, 36 families living there, and uh, each family has elected uh, uh, um, a people who is uh, representing uh, them family, and these are the. Uh, it's not official. It's not uh, official for the Chile government, but you can do nothing on the island, nothing without having the approval of the families, and uh, now Sasipa has signed a protocol that they are agreed to operate the waste to energy machine on the municipality uh, land. And this is uh, something uh, just uh, uh, incredible. Uh, so we aligned the, 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 the vision, and, we, and the SASIPA is now very motivated by that. I need to work with SASIPA, why? Because they have the, enge the engineers and I need engineers to run uh, these kind of plants. So I have to align engineers to run the plant, but the, the area where I have to put the plant should be a municipality area. So I have to align also the municipality with the SASIPA, and it's done. And we have signed the, 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 the agreements. Uh, that's fantastic. Uh, and Let me backtrack for a, so, for a moment. Who in the audience has read the book Collapse? Do you remember the chapter on uh, Easter Island? Yeah. It's a lie. It's not true. And now we have the DNA and now we have the detailed scientific analysis that actually the collapse was not a matter of these fights and the deforestation. It was the introduction of the rats. We know even that the rats came from Vietnam, and the rats started eating the nuts from the coconuts. And since they were eating the coconuts, the coconut trees, which are endemic, were not reproducing anymore. And then, of course, the crisis emerged. And what wasn't done by the rats was secured by the colonials because a Dutchman came by and called this island Easter Island because he was there on the day of Easter. And from then on, no one called it anymore Rapa Nui. So what we have done, first of all, to the Rapa Nui is apologize for the world to believe Jared Diamond's collapse. Because it is not cannibalism, it is not a destruction because they wanted to have these huge statues. It's because an introduction of a rat, and we can even trace the rat how it got there, by the DNA analysis and the carbon timing, etc. 
To us, this is a very important process. We have to apologize for believing fake news. Mm -hmm. But, and, that's, uh, and, and to us, that is what uh, really Marco has been doing in an amazing way. But I had to get the president to agree to that as well. Because he's a newly elected president, and of course, he's going to celebrate with the military 130 years of annexation of Rapa Nui. And what was the initiative we got him to do? He introduced a law to uh, change the name. Ex exactly, because before it was Easter Island, no, officially it's Rapa Nui Island. We thought that was the first thing we have to do with the people, is get their name back. <laughs> and, and unfortunately, that only works with the president signing a decree. You can't go through the parliament and say, would you all members of parliament agree to? No, the president did it. And so we had a meeting with the president beforehand, and then the president came with five ministers and spent a couple hours on the boat. And what happened then, because your plastics is only 16%, what are we going to do with the rest? Exactly. I will come to that. When I, I met uh, Günther last, uh, last year here in, uh, in, uh, in Zermatt, we decided to uh, uh, look how we can uh, uh, work together there with the blue economy. And uh, Günther uh, told me, you know, Marco, this boat, for me, looks uh, like an island. It's an island. Huh? Uh, we, uh, we, need, uh, we have sun, water, wind. It's exactly the same that we have today in the islands. So could we imagine to transform islands in the world using only sustainable energies? I said to Gunther, yes, uh, it's a great uh, vision, a great idea, and uh, uh, let's do it. So uh, we have a work on that on Easter Island, because as Gunther said, e Easter Island is the most well-known island in the world. So if we can do that there, we can do that every everywhere. It's the biggest challenge because it's so far away. We have politics challenge. We have. Oh, all the, 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 the uh, we said that, the, 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 uh, the, 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 the fact that are uh, against us. So it's why if we are successful there, we, 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 we will be successful everywhere. So the boat, I think you cannot see very well, so I will do like that. This is my, my, my boat. The boat per year is uh, making 110 megawatt hour of electricity per year using the hydrogen, the sun. Uh, if the Easter Island today, they need 14,000 megawatt hour. If we do 110 times what we do on the boat, we can provide 100% of the energy of Rapa Nui. So we have uh, worked uh, with uh, engineers on that. So we know uh, today exactly how much, uh, how many uh, solar panels we need to put uh, on the islands. And with the solar panels, we can uh, make about 90% of the electricity of the island. But, but Marco, you calculated all the roofs, right? It, yes, right. So we need uh, something that you can roll on the roofs. You remember, yeah. Hubert. Uh, you know, we it, need to talk about that. Exactly. Because the, the weight, well, you made yesterday an incredible statement. You said, I'm considered less efficient per square meter, but I'm more efficient per weight. Now, we none of these buildings is made for having a heavy roof. They're only made for having light systems like yours. Yeah. And I need also for my boat your technology, but... Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, <laughs> Let's do it. Exactly, let's do it. So we have to discuss, but uh, it's, uh, it, it could be uh, very interesting because uh, the weight is also key on a boat. Mm. So after that, uh, where we can store the energy? We, have, uh, we can store the, the energy on uh, stationary batteries, as uh, we are doing on the boat. Huh? We have uh, batteries in the hull of the boat. Or you can store the energy in the cars. So if we can have 1,250 cars on the island, electric cars, we can store all 
the uh, energy coming from the solar panels inside the battery of the cars. And they don't need to, uh, to drive so many uh, kilometers there because the island is quite small. So how, there are how much across? How much across? 20 uh, kilometers? 20. 20. Okay. So, yes, we need uh, bicycles, but uh, uh, they are also uh, carrying things. And, uh, but uh, there, is, uh, there are uh, bicycles. Uh, so if we store uh, the energy in, inside the, the car, we can do because we, uh, the car do, the doesn't use, uh, we, when you are driving and another 30 kilometers per day, you use maybe 10, uh, 15 or maximum 20% of your battery. So it's the batteries of the car who will get the electricity on the grid, will give the electricity on the, on the grid. Hydrogen. The same uh, thing that uh, we are doing on the, on the boat, when uh, you don't have a um, good sun, you are not providing a lot of electricity with the, your solar panels, so you have to store somewhere the, the, the energy. So the idea is when you have good conditions of sun, you are making the hydrogen by uh, using and pumping the, 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 the salt water from the ocean, you are storing this uh, hydrogen in tanks, and when uh, you are in the winter, when uh, it's cloudy, but you can use the, uh, um, uh, the hydrogen to make the electricity. And Marco, this is a Swiss company? Uh, yes, it's, uh, it was a Swiss company. It's now owned by? Uh, Plasticonium. I saw it was my company, uh, you saw in the, in the movie, uh, the, the company uh, was called uh, Swiss, Swiss Hydrogen. And I sold this company uh, last year. Uh, to plasticonium. Maybe I can explain you after why I, I have to, to, to solve the, this company. It's also a, a very interesting. Uh, maybe I speak about it? No, yes. no, no, no. We don't have so much time. We want okay. to see more of your energy types. Okay. Solution for the island. Water. When you are making back the hydrogen to electricity, you are also making steel water. So you can use this water, and water is key on the islands. Steel water are, uh, is very, very key. So because, you can imagine... Because, Marco, as I understand, all the underground water is basically contaminated? It starts to be, yes. So they have basically destroyed, over the years, their own water resources. So just by uh, uh, having 20 days of uh, storage of uh, hydrogen, we can make about uh, 350,000 liters of uh, steel water that uh, we can drink it. You saw in the clip where that we are using those uh, kites. To uh, know that the, the same company is developing power kites. Oh, that's, it works. And that's a German company. It's a German company. And the CEO is coming tomorrow. I've asked him to join us tomorrow and talk about this. How can you get a container in and two hours later fly your kite, connect, and two hours later you have power? So the kite is starting at, at about uh, 100, uh, 150 meters, and you have a pod. Uh, the pod is, uh, is like the human people. It's artificial intelligence. We'll see that tomorrow. And uh, yes, and inside the, 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 the container, you have a computer, and re, uh, by a remote control, you are controlling the kite. The kite is making a eight, as you saw in the, the clip, and is going up, up, up until about 800 uh, meters. So during the, the, this uh, uh, fly, is the kite is making uh, electricity uh, in the container. And after that, we we have, we have to go back down with the kite, so we are using about 5% of the, the energy that we are, we are making. Now, how and much the rest, you can, you can uh, uh, sell it. In the plan for the island, how many kites do you want to install? Uh, uh, you have, uh, uh, today you have 100 kilowatt uh, kites, so two or three kites uh, could be enough uh, to provide the electricity during the night. After that, we will... Uh, Isn't this fascinating? See. I mean, come on. This is three kites you fly, and you're supplying to 6,000 people all the power they need. And when there's a plane coming in, you just pull it down. I mean, 
Why do we want to make life difficult? And uh, here, uh, back to the waste to the uh, waste to energy, and uh, what uh, I, I told you just before, with uh, just by transforming the waste in energy there with this uh, new technology and uh, very uh, interesting and efficient technology by uh, using uh, hyperolysis, uh, breaking the, the, the molecules of uh, the waste in syngas and uh, transforming the syngas in electricity, we can imagine uh, to uh, provide about 16% of the energy of the island. And uh, they are uh, also working uh, on a, what we call an eco park. This is uh, the mayor of Rapanui who is uh, in touch with the Chile government since uh, uh, five, six years. And uh, this eco park uh, should be ready in 2020. Uh, so the, the, the goal is to put the machine, uh, the, the, the waste to energy machine, in the eco park and operated by Sasipa. No, no, we, we uh, yeah, yeah. You, you go over very quickly with the money side. I think we need to be transparent. The total budget for this, uh, how much are we talking about? Uh, we are talking about uh, thirty-four uh, thousand millions uh, of U.S. dollars. Thirty-four uh, million. Thirty, thirty-four million. Sorry. 34 yeah. millions, sorry about it, yeah. yes. 34 millions for uh, waste to energy, solar panel, batteries, hydrogen, uh, engineers, and uh, logistics. And, and, and that doesn't include the cars, of course. If you include everything, what is your ballpark number of investments? Uh, about 80. 80 million euro or dollars. Uh, if you uh, count the eco park inside and... Uh, without the eco park? Uh, without, uh, it's uh, 60, uh, 70. $70 million, you have already $4 million in subsidies that's arriving over 20 years, there you got $80 million. Can we calculate? Now, this is why we need to meet the president, because we need to tell him that stop subsidizing and start investing. And, you know, and this is one of the very simple things that the president has agreed. We now need to get it through the system with the Inter-American Development Bank. We have to get private investors involved. We need to get the international community involved. But one of the key issues is that we want the power in the end of the day and the water to be owned by the local people. We want them to be the owners of that power and water infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Do you see an opening there? Yes. How? <laughs> Many. Uh, the return of invest of this kind of, uh, of a project is less than uh, 10 years. It's not bad, huh? But of course, if you're paying 70 cents kilowatt hour today, I mean, just about any investment proposal will do better. So, uh, I think we, we, we can, uh, or, or and, uh, imagine a found, uh, a blue, uh, the idea is blue uh, is less uh, found, where we can uh, uh, get a private found to, uh, uh, to realize those kind of project for the islands. And we can start with uh, this uh, project, with Rapanui uh, project, and uh, doing that for the others. And it could be a, a huge fund uh, that uh, uh, we can uh, have uh, quite uh, enough uh, uh, money to, uh, to, to do and to start that uh, around the world. Let, let me add to that. The idea is that we will take the technology of the plastics to energy, we create a local regional company, that company will grow that market, and we already talked in Peru, we already talked uh, in Bolivia, we talked in other countries, so that we can use the reference of Rapanui, but you have a vehicle on the market to start rolling out this in a competitive commercial way. The same way we're approaching it uh, with the with the sky sales, exactly. Uh, that means that we're setting up a local company, investment in that company, and grow the local market by installing this and building up a portfolio of of sales. And in parallel, uh, we should deal with the, the the government because they are giving us so much subsidies. You can explain what you, uh, you already did on uh, um, the Spanish uh, island, uh, Eros? 
Yeah, I mean, but, but what I think is very important is now that we have the attention and ear of the Minister of Energy, the Ministry of Environment, the Ministry of uh, Interior, the, minister, the President himself, um, um, I'm returning to Rapa Nui in the end of October for three days on the island, and then I have an amazing invitation that is on in 14th of uh, January, I'm addressing the Parliament uh, of uh, Chile, uh, to make a comprehensive proposal so that they can start making the decisions because the president can only do a signature for a proposal of a law, he can't pass the law. And what we're talking about is changing the law. And I think this is very important. With, if you don't have, and maybe we have to start wrapping up, uh, um, if you don't have something as, uh, as magical as this boat that lands Kids can come, the president can come, everyone comes on the boat. People's minds are transformed when they get off the boat. Because it's obvious that with sun, sea, and wind, you can do it all. And by having that magical moment of the 